Hi, Mike. Welcome to UCSF. It's great to be part of the Organize the Planet series. Today I'll speak to you about the implantable bioartificial kidney that we are working on here. It's a device that will be used to treat end-stage renal failure and provide the benefits of a kidney transplant to the patients that can't get it today. What I have here in front of me is a prototype model. And this is a device that consists of a filter, just like your kidneys, that will remove toxins and also contains another section called the bioreactor. And the bioreactor contains cells, kidney cells, that will provide the biological functions of a kidney. Now, to contrast this with dialysis, in dialysis we just provide the filtration component, but not the cellular component. Transplants obviously do both. Unfortunately, we don't have enough transplant organs today to go around to serve all those that need it. So what we are hopeful for is with this device is, a, is, a, is something that will provide total renal replacement for the vast majority of patients that can't get a transplant today. The bioreactor actually contains cells that have been seeded on membranes so that when the body fluids pass over these cells, they will react very much like the kidney tubule does. And so what does the kidney tubule do? It, lets help, it, it helps with volume balance, or amount of water that gets reabsorbed after filtration. It helps with maintaining the immune system. It helps with vitamin D production and maintaining the acid-base balance and also regulate the blood pressure. You just don't get that at dialysis. Now, kidney transplants are great, but you also need immune suppressant drugs. So, I am a bioengineer by training, and I've been working on the development of medical devices for unmet clinical needs for about 20 years now. The, for the artificial kidney, I've been at it with our team for about 10 years. And my lab focuses on both the development of the core technology and testing it in animals. We have worked on this for some time now, and the results have been very promising. We've shown progress of each of the components in animals, in pigs, and in sheep and in rodents, and it looks great. We, to move from where we are today to something that will be tested in a patient, we'd have to scale up the device, test it for safety, show that it actually maintains its performance over a long period of time in animals, and then we go to clinical trials. We anticipate the time from today to where it will go into patients is on the order of four to six years. So the implantable bioartificial kidney would be located in the abdomen, very much like a kidney transplant. It would be attached to the existing blood vessels, again through a surgery that's very much similar to a transplant surgery. And after it's done, it will run autonomously um, without the need for any intervention. In terms of you know, uh, how it would be, how it would, uh, be maintained, uh, the cells that are in there would receive nutrients from the body and survive, and the filter would operate autonomously, filtering toxins. We anticipate that when this is all developed, it will actually cost less to maintain than transplant would. The surgery would be likely cost similar to what transplant is, and we anticipate that would be covered by existing insurance. But after that's done, it would actually be cheaper for the patients and the insurance companies because unlike transplant, we would not need transplant uh, suppressant drugs. I was originally born in what is now Bangladesh, uh, which is near India. I grew up in East Africa, in Uganda. When I was about uh, 18 years old, I got a scholarship to attend a small liberal arts school in Ohio. Please check it out. It's called Mount Union College. It's a great little school, and after I finished my uh, undergraduate there, I went to Case Western Reserve for graduate school and worked there after the Cleveland Clinic, and then I came out here to San Francisco. The, the UCSF Department of Bioengineering and Therapeutic Sciences, and UCSF uh, is located all over San Francisco. You're at this Mission Bay campus, right by the AT&T Park, and our focus here tends to the development of bioengineered solutions to unmet clinical needs. My lab 
is consists of engineers, scientists, and postdocs, as well as graduate students from Berkeley and UCSF. So welcome, Mike. I'll give you a quick tour of our lab. This is uh, located in Mission Bay, and what you see here is the ben lab bench where we do a lot of our uh, testing and development of the artificial kidney. What you see here are small chips. These are, very, these are the same chips that will be used in the artificial kidney. Here we've taken them apart and we're actually analyzing them and we're going to do some tests over with this setup. So each of these chips really mimic the filter in your kidneys and it will be, it will be the basis for artificial kidney. So if we turn over this side, you'll see a system where we actually test the filtration characteristics of our membranes. And we want to make sure that the filtration is as good as it needs to be for an artificial kidney. So we actually take those chips that I just showed you, put them into a little setup here, and that gets hooked in, and this is basically a flow system to test out the filtration. If it looks great, then we'll take it to the next level. Over here, Mike, is a, is a section where we actually coat our little filters with thin films that will prevent blood clotting. So all these materials here have been coated with molecular films that mimic what's in our body. So when blood from uh, the artery goes over the filter, it will not think of it as a foreign body and start clotting. So we've developed very unique uh, algorithms and protocols to do that coding and that's why this happened and what you're seeing is just a bunch of chemistry uh, tools and setups that we do this in.